Hey there, Joe Braun here of the DCS Mech Warriors. In this video, we're going to take a DC motor and find out its maximum velocity. Let me switch over to my desktop and we'll get started. All right, so we have a team code here. We're going to expand that and then go to Java and then expand our YouTube uh, folder. And so in previous videos, we've created motor one, two, and three. We're going to actually copy three. So again, we're continuing to layer on uh, our motor. So motor four, we're going to add to this. So we're going to copy. So I right clicked on motor three and click copy. I'm going to come up here to YouTube, right click and come down to paste. And then we're going to call this particular one instead of motor three, motor four, and then push enter. And it's going to create that new op mode for us, new Java class. Okay, so we have a copy of three. We're going to edit this to make it our motor four example. So I'm going to open up uh, my member training, uh, my notes basically, and we're going to go down here to maximum velocity test. I'm gonna move that down to the bottom of the screen so everybody can see my notes there and then go ahead and collapse the side menu. So uh, let me scroll to the top. And what we're gonna do is basically basically make this uh, top uh, window match the bottom window uh, with the notes that I'm adding to it. So in our configuration file, we're gonna go ahead and add a motor, uh, motor port and this one will be three. And we're going to call this motor four. Uh, so we now have our name that we're going to use in Java and also in our config file to make uh, our hardware map match up. Again, these are notes for us to actually go onto the driver hub and enter that manually. It doesn't do it automatically. Uh, just as, as in previous videos, we're going to leave this disabled for now. If you're doing your robot, you would enable that by commenting that out with two forward slashes, but I am going to get rid of those. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave this in the group for examples. Now, uh, we do have, I was thinking about our um, run op mode. We are going to make a change there, but before we get there, uh, I want to go ahead and add our variables. So we've got motor one, motor two, and motor three. So we're going to create some space right here and I'm going to actually just come down here and copy and paste those in and then we'll talk about them. So just as in previous examples, uh, maybe I missed, nope, I didn't put it in my notes. So I'm going to add a private here. Uh, it's okay if you leave that off, but we're going to add the um, access modifier private in front of there. We're still accessing the uh, DC motor, but you'll notice that there's an EX on the end. Um, so we are basically removing the PID and we can manually tune that, which is what we're going to do in the next video. But for right now, we just want raw power. And so, um, extended, I think is what that stands for. I'm not for sure on that. Um, but we're going to use motor four for our variable. And just as in previous videos, we've got the, uh, zero power set for motor four. Uh, we're trying to find our max power. So we're going to set it to 100%, uh, when we run this test. Our current velocity uh, is going to start out as zero, so we're going to instantiate that to be zero to begin with, and that's going to change as the motor ramps up. And then our max velocity, we're going to also instantiate that to be zero, but that will change as we run the op mode. But we're beginning with them to be zero. You technically probably could go ahead and um, leave these as uh, nothing as far as instantiated, or you could put equals null, um, which means that it's empty. Uh, either one would be fine for this, but I'm going to control Z and we'll just leave those as zero. Um, what we're going to do down here, as I already alluded, we're going to change this. We don't want teleop controls in this particular one. So I'm going to control forward slash and comment that out. And we're going to add another function in here for the maximum velocity test once we have it created. Other than that, run op mode stays completely the same because um, we're going to want to output our motor telemetry, um, not necessarily in the init, but during the motor test, we definitely want to be able to see that. So everything else is going to stay the same. Uh, we are going to create in a second a uh, op mode, uh, not an op mode, a function or a method that's going to go in here for our motor four, but because we haven't created it, we just turn red. So we'll come back to that in a second. Here is our motor one, our motor two, and motor three. So like I said, we're just layering things in. So I'm going to come down and put motor four right below that. 
Um, so that is this method right here. So let me copy that. We've done this example in uh, previous videos. So there's not a lot to change here. Uh, not a lot that's different. So we still have motor four setting the hardware map. Um, the one thing that does change is we've got EXE on the class. Again, we're using the extended uh, class. And then our motor four variable matches up with our configura configuration file, just like up top. We're gonna go ahead and run this in the forward direction. We're going to set our power to zero um, out of the gate. So these three settings um, are fairly straightforward. Uh, when we, Since we're gonna run to maximum test, we're not gonna put any strain on the motor trying to stop it. So we'll just allow it to float. When we turn off the op mode, it'll just spin down. Um, and then we're gonna reset our encoder to be a zero. Uh, not because we're really using it, we're just trying to find the maximum velocity, um, but kind of have it. Uh, and then we're gonna run without the encoder because we don't want the PID in the background uh, managing the motor velocity. We want to run it full tilt. So we're gonna run it without the PID. Um, so without encoder, again, previous videos we discussed, it, it still gives us the encoder data, but it doesn't manage it using the PID. Um, and then in teleop controls, we're not actually going to use this. I'm kind of shocked that's still gold because we did comment that out up here. And that's the only place that it's used. So um, I would have thought that would turn to gray, but it has not. Um, and then down here, uh, we've got our run to position, which we did in the last video. So let's go ahead and add our new method for a velocity test right below that. Um, actually, it might make more sense if we skip down because these were resetting the encoders uh, in the previous video. So let's put this right here. Um, so here's our maximum velocity method or function that we're going to be creating. So I'm going to drop that in here and let's discuss it. So uh, the very descriptive uh, method name, I was going to say class name, but method name. Um, so motor four maximum velocity test tells us exactly what we're going to do with the method. Um, again, it's a method public void and then the um, function name. Uh, it's indicated that it's a function because of the parentheses. And then inside there is where um, the magic kind of happens inside the code block. So if this method is called, it's going to run all of the code underneath this um, code block. So the first thing we want to do since we're running maximum velocity is set the power to be the maximum velocity or in other words, 100%. So again, if I control click, I can jump up there and take a look at what that is. So um, one as a decimal uh, or 100% as a decimal is one. So we're at 100%. Let me drop back down there and we'll continue looking at that. There it is right there. Um, and then what we're going to do is take our current velocity. This is a... Um, a variable that we created up top. And we're gonna set that to, using the encoder data, whatever motor four's velocity is, we're gonna set that to our current velocity. So we created this variable up top up here. Let me find that real quick, should be right about here. So here's our current velocity, it's set to zero. So as the motor spins up, it's gonna go get the data from uh, the encoder and it's gonna say, okay, the current velocity is this, so say it's 1000 RPMs, it's gonna write that or store that into the current velocity variable, okay? And then we're gonna use that in this math equation down here in our conditional. So if the current velocity, whatever it is right now, is greater than whatever we stored in the max velocity, so say this is 1000, and we set this to be zero, what it's gonna do is write the maximum velocity um, as whatever is stored in the current velocity. So if this was a thousand, it's gonna write maximum velocity as a thousand also. And as this continues to spin up, this number is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. But if this drops, um, then max velocity is not gonna drop. So it's storing our maximum velocity because it's running this over and over and over again, because we're gonna take this function right here and we're gonna put it inside uh, our run op mode, which is way up here now. So this function right here. So this is, again, we said we name things by our hardware. So if I type in motor four, and then I start to look for that function, um, still hasn't really limited down. So I'm gonna continue to type four. And now I see maximum velocity test and I can push tab and that will fill that in. So we're gonna run our maximum velocity test 
um, over and over again because it's in a while loop once we push play. So I've noticed a couple things that I forgot to do as I was scrolling up there. Um, we created this function for init motor four, but I never put it in the method stack. So therefore it's still grayed out. I noticed that it was grayed out. So what I wanna do is take this function right here. And we said early in the video that we're gonna come back, but I didn't do it. So I'm gonna paste that in there, um, put our parentheses to indicate that it's a method and then end our sentence with a semicolon. So now this piece of hardware is being knitted and um, when it runs that up here, uh, already passed it, uh, init hardware, it's going to include now init motor four. Now, if we had run that um, and tried to call this maximum velocity test, but it couldn't find the error, uh, it, it would have told us exactly that. There's an error and it wouldn't be able to run the code. So we did fix that problem. Uh, the last thing that I need to do is go down to the telemetry and uh, we had uh, this resetting the encoder on motor three. We're not gonna use that anymore. So let's go ahead and comment that out. And what we're gonna do is output our telemetry that we want for this maximum velocity test. So we're running max velocity tests. It's storing all the information in these variables, but the user can't see what it is. So what we need to do is display that on our driver hub. So we're gonna copy this and paste that in. So our current um, power will, show 100% or, well, as it spins up, it won't be 100%, but by the time that uh, it's starting to read and probably you as a human can see anything, it'll probably say 100%. It'll say our maximum velocity. So that number should uh, increase until it spins up to the actual maximum RPMs that the motor can spin. And then current velocity will kind of drift up and down um, once it gets that maximum velocity actually over time because the battery is gonna drain this should drift off. So say this was 5,000 RPMs, um, this might drift down to 4,500 over, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes. Um, just making up numbers there. But uh, this number will eventually drift downward, um, but our maximum velocity will be recorded. And what we're gonna do is use that in tuning our PID in the very next video. So what I wanna do is take a quick look at my notes, just scanning back through here, make sure I didn't miss anything. I think we're good uh, now, now that I caught a few mistakes. Um, so what we're gonna do is run this on a motor. Um, so for the next video, I'm just gonna make up a number because I don't actually have a robot uh, to plug this into. My team is using all the control hubs. So I'm um, kind of left going over the code without a actual control hub, but I'll make up a number that we, for instance, got if we ran this test hypothetical, and then we'll use this number to set our PID uh, tuning for our next video and our next op mode. So uh, just to double check that, uh, yep, tuning PID is the very next video that we'll be creating. So if you have any questions about this one, go ahead and throw those in the comments and we hope to catch you in the next one. Have a great day and bye-bye.